Hi, I wanted to show you some of the improvements that we've made in the 2.5 release of Photo Ephemeris Web. Primarily, these are going to be to do with maps and 3D terrain, so 3D maps, if you will, in the Sphere page. But just to get you a sense of, of where I have things set up, here we are in Boulder in Colorado. Uh, the town lies mostly on the flat, and off to the west here we have a whole bunch of hills, um, leading up into the, the peaks of the Rockies even further to the west than you can see here. So let me first of all come over to the Sphere page. If you have seen this before, here's what it looks like. It shows you a disk, it shows, gives you a sense of the, the compass points there to the north, south, east and west. And it shows you by means of these lines and the paths. I'll make the, the sun and the moon a bit larger so we can see them more easily. It shows you the, how they move across the course of the day and the night. So you can see the moon and the sun and the band of the Milky Way. That's the little series of bluish spheres. As I just advance and reverse the time, there's the sun moving towards sunset in the late afternoon. It's set to a date in, in April here. Uh, so things are rising and setting slightly to the north. So that's, um, that's the sphere as it has been today. It works really well in conjunction with visual search, which lets you find when the, the sun or the moon will be at a certain point in the sky or the galactic center indeed. And in the new release, you can now toggle this panel on and off using this little switch here. So it's now off by default just to make things a little bit clearer um, in terms of what you're able to see. The other thing that now you can do uh, is show the timeline instead of the chart, or you can hide both to maximize the screen real estate for the sphere itself. But I'm going to go back to showing the chart because I'm going to be moving the time of day a little bit. So here's the first change and this, this is available to all users uh, free or, or paid. I can toggle the map on within the sphere. So what this is showing you now is you, you see exactly where the red pin was set to on the map page and you can see that quite clearly within the bounds of the sphere. With a map selected, there are a few things you can do. You can change the map style, so I can change to a black and white map. There is a satellite map available if you're a pro subscriber. You can choose any of these styles, so outdoors for example. But I'll switch it back here to the black and white one. You'll see why I like that one in, in a moment. So that's the map style control up at the top left as, as it is on the map page. The other thing, you can zoom in or you can zoom out. And as I zoom out, uh, the amount of land that is contained within the bounds of this disk is, is increasing. So the, the map is at a larger scale, so there's not quite as many details visible, but there's a larger area visible. So I can zoom back in, back out like that. So that's maps within the sphere. That should give a lot more context to what you're seeing as as you use the sphere page, it, it's much easier to imagine the the physical setup of where the pin's located when the map is shown here as well. If you're a pro subscriber, you can enable this additional control. So let me switch that on and show you what it does. That gives you 3D maps. Um, you can see as I angle out here the the terrain, as I mentioned before, flat out to the east. Um, hilly here to the west and uh, I can zoom around and just if you watch as I sort of move the time forward through the day the shadows clear we're in the middle of the day not much shadow falling particularly this late in spring we get into the afternoon and the shadows start creeping over the over the landscape and then they set so that's 3d 3d terrain and obviously that's a, a ton of information about really seeing how the light is going to fall on the land and do, doing it really from any, any viewpoint you like. You can fly in and I think it's really good with, with the, this, the maps to make sure that you take a good look around, get a sense of what is included, what isn't included within the view. So for example, if I wanted to bring some other mountains or more terrain into the view, I can zoom out and it loads further back. I'll go another one again 
and now we're getting up into the, the higher mountains here. If you live in Boulder, uh, you, most people know that, that from Boulder downtown area, you can't really see the, the high Rockies that are further over to the west here. So they're not affecting the, the shadows as, uh, as the sun sets. It's really driven by the, um, the foothills here and the, the flat irons, as they're called, to the, to the south. But in other situations, you probably want to experiment with the the zoom level to make sure that you have something, that you have all the terrain that affects the, where the shadows will fall included within the bounds of the sphere. I'm going to zoom back in again to show you one more little trick. What we've added here is, I don't know if you can see, as I'm just adjusting the time back and forth, the, the orange line that represents the direction from which the sun is coming, off to the left of the screen or to the west, is now projected through the red pin and it intersects on the ground. And basically that point of intersection is gives you an indication of where you would need to be to watch the sun set directly behind this point here. This is the summit of a place called Manzanitas, which is a little hill, um, popular hiking trail off to the, the west of, of downtown. And you can see here that as I adjust the time, that projection line it sort of points on the map to, to roughly where you would where you would need to be. I'll zoom in one more level. There you go. So we can see that, for example, this is on where have I got it set to Tuesday of next week. At around seven o'clock, the sun will be directly behind the summit of Mount Sanitas if you're standing at that point on 19th Street. Let me just flip back to the map, show you one other thing here. I'm going to put uh, let's go to this outdoor map style here. Zoom in a level, enable geodetics. I'll put that in this park here, for example. Then I'm going to just swap the pin positions just to give you a sense of how geodetics appears with this, this terrain enabled. And um, you can see there that now the gray pin is up on the summit of the mountain. The red pin is where I dropped it downtown. And we can visualize that so you know that at this time of year things are a little bit too far north here's where you could use visual search enable that use the geodetics as a target uh, scroll down run a search and look these ones where the line crosses the center of the target are pr pretty good there you go there's a, a date when from exactly that point downtown to exactly this summit location here, the bottom of the grey pin, where the pin meets the ground specifically. On 30th of August, the sun will be right behind there at around 6, 6.36 in the, in the evening. Toggle that off once again. Let me switch to the timeline here. One other little thing that we've added in. Oh, no, I went back a page there. I'm going to go back to the sphere. Come to today. I've got the, the timeline showing here on the sphere page. I'm going to click to the next event and the next event is full moon on Monday. Another addition to this release is the apogee and perigee of the moon. So the moon's distance from the earth varies throughout the course of the month and at various points in the month it re reaches its closest approach and then it recedes to its greatest distance for that lunar cycle that's called the apogee so that's when the moon is farthest away therefore appears smallest in the sky when it's closest that's called perigee and when a perigee occurs close to the time of full moon that's formally known as a perigee full moon commonly known as a supermoon, which you'll have undoubtedly read about in the press. And some people will say, hey, that's just all nonsense, don't worry about it. But it actually does make a difference to the, the number of pixels that your camera will collect that include the moon for the same focal length. It's, it's like nature's teleconverter for the moon, if you will. So here, what this says, disk plus 13.7%, means that the moon's disk appears around nearly 14% larger in the sky than it does when the moon is at its typical uh, apogee or you know most extreme distance. So you're getting a 14% larger moon, apparently larger moon in the sky than uh, the than when it's at its smallest. And then in addition to that, uh, the moment of perigee itself occurs just one day later the following morning, and it's 
eight uh, percent larger at that point. But you only really care about it when it's going to be rising, uh, as in a you know f- a full moon type event. So yeah, that's apogee and perigee uh, also added into this release 2.5. I'll do some more detailed uh, presentations on these features uh, separately, but hopefully this gives you a good intro and uh, certainly help you enjoy exploring dynamic shadows on these maps with the terrain models to plan your photos. Thanks for listening.